fall of 2021, we set out to hike Sweden's high coast. We hiked a scenic trail along the Baltic coast, varying a lot between deep forests, mountain tops, and views over the Baltic Sea. This is the story of Hobakusteleden. In Hornoberget we jumped off the bus, ready for our 130 km adventure. On the first evening we walked our first few kilometers before finding a beautiful spot to pitch our tents. I hiked this trail with a friend of mine, Gijs. This trek was his first while wild camping along the way. The Hoga Kusten area we were traversing owes its name to post-glacial rebound, a process causing the coastal area to continuously rise. That process has resulted in a unique landscape with the highest coastline in the world. The trail is a winding path over rocky hills, through beautiful forests and with striking views over the Baltic Sea. Every now and then the path would wind along the coast with endless views over the archipelago. The mountain top camping spots had beautiful views for us to enjoy as we cooked our dinner. Played some cards. Rated our meals. Yeah. Yeah. And we're off to bed. It was great to see how Gijs was enjoying his first trip and the sweetest nature around him so much. Even though the Hoga Kustenleden passes through some urbanized areas and doesn't run through the remote wilderness as found in northern Sweden, the nature experience is no less. Just two days out we were connected with nature forgot our phones and even started to forget the days of the week. Getting completely absorbed in nature was easy with the camping spots we found, with beautifully secluded spots in the middle of nowhere.
After a wash in the lake and a good night's sleep and a sunny sunny morning, we were on our way. Just a few days out and our bodies were already adjusted to the cooler autumn weather. This far up north in Sweden, autumn sets in quite early, as we saw nature turning into beautiful yellows and oranges as we moved through the wooded hills and eventually crossed the halfway point. <laughs> Somehow we kept stumbling upon magnificent lunch and camping spots. There are many shelters along the trail, which were perfect to lit our campfire and watch the nightfall over the Baltic Sea. As we progressed on the Hoga Kustenleden, we entered into Skuleskogens National Park, the real highlight of the trail and a little piece of remote wilderness. Here we crossed through some of the last remaining old grown forest along the trail and over rocks that used to make up the seabed. In the middle of the park there is a beautiful little cabin, which was great to warm up and eat our dinner before we pitched our tents close by and enjoyed the moon rising for the night. As we woke up, the calm lake made way for choppy waters and some drizzle. Getting close to the trail's terminus, we were in for a long day on the trail. For the next day, extreme rain was forecasted, so we planned to get as close as possible to Ornskolutsvik. Taking in the last views of the windy Baltic Sea, we kept on walking until darkness fell. As expected, we woke up early for a rainy day. The camera unfortunately stayed tucked away for the remainder of the day, as we finished around midday, just before the worst of the rain hit Sweden. The Hoga Kusten was a surprising trail with an enjoyable variety of coast, forest, hills and meadows, remoteness and cute little villages.
as we took the train to Stockholm, our adventure had come to an end.